Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we got the crypto market here, Bitcoin trading at 83.15, Ethereum at 183, and XRP at 0.291. Bitcoin down a little at, uh, down by 0.36%, uh, Ethereum down 0.04%, and XRP up 0.34%. Still chugging along, still doing all right in the space. The market cap is at 225.3 billion and Bitcoin dominance, uh, you know, 66.4%. We're starting to see the dominance slowly decrease over time. And will this continue to be a trend? Well, um, you know, this is XRP on the hourly, but uh, we'll get back to that in a sec. I'm just going to look at Bitcoin. And yeah, look at this, you know, Bitcoin's still not doing too much, whereas uh, uh, other coins are making some movement upwards. Bitcoin just seems to be you know, in a bit of a rut right now. Let's get back to XRP. This is XRP on the hourly, guys. And guys, you can see XRP last night made a new micro high of about 30 cents. And then uh, at this point here is at 29.9. And as you can see, um, sellers got a little excited and, uh, you know, dumped a little bit here. But now we're starting to see the momentum rise again. Uh, this just within the last hour here. Trading right now at uh, 0.291 cents. So I'm interested to see how the day goes today. We've seen a uh, positive upward momentum for XRP since, uh, you know, essentially since September 29th. And boom, the momentum has just continued to move upward. Could this be swell related? This is on everybody's mind. Swell is happening at the beginning of November. And, uh, you know, historically we have seen XRP move up, uh, you know, in anticipation for the swell uh, conference for Swell News for anything that Ripple will be mentioning at their Swell, their annual Swell conference. So last year at Swell, they announced the X Rapid uh, launch and uh, XRP went up by 300% in a matter of days. Uh, you know, it could be a good opportunity for some spec trading, you know, just to catch a few bucks here and there. Of course, if you make 300% on your money, that is going to be nothing compared to to what you will make from your XRP down the road. But you know, in the interim, I know a lot of us are feeling like, hey, you know, I've been holding this digital asset for so long. Nobody will judge you if you trade a little bit in the interim and then buy back in when it comes back down because of course, that speculative momentum cannot sustain itself forever. Uh, so, you know, just a thought guys, I'm not a financial advisor. You do what you wanna do with your hard earned money. I'm just letting you know what I'm gonna do. You know, last year I thought, ah, 300%, that's nothing. You know, I'm waiting for the big kahuna. But of course, this space is moving at a snail's pace. And, you know, there's a point where you just have to kind of say to yourself, okay, I know this is moving at a snail's pace. Do I want to catch some dollars right now with the likelihood of the price dropping again being high? Or do I just want to play it extra, extra safe and just keep hodling? Well, the more you learn about a space and the more you trade, the more knowledge you have and the more comfortable you are making those trades that you think, you know, uh, you know, maybe six months or eight months ago, you might think, uh, you know, that might not work out for me. Eight months down the road, you might see yourself in a different position thinking, no, you know what? I'm going to do this because I know price will retreat in a spec rally. It always does, guys. Look at that MoneyGram stock uh, that I was talking about a few, uh, few weeks ago or a few months ago, whenever that was. It's about a month ago now. This is MGI. This is MoneyGram. Uh, and it is indeed falling into the zones that I predicted. I uh, originally, around this time here, I originally uh, drew out some potential levels of support. And so it did go up even higher. And then boom, hit this level. Went up here. Then boom, hit this level. Now it's coming back up here. Wonder if it's going to hit this level down here. I will buy MoneyGram, I think, if I see it come down to this level. Of course, everything depends on the economy because the economy is looking a little shaky right now. And Anyway, this from XRP Veteran on Twitter. That's at XRP underscore Veteran. Ripple Coinbase invest in crypto exchange Bitso to help it expand beyond Mexico. And guys, as you know, Bitso is an XRP liquidity partner. Uh, but essentially, Bitso, one of Mexico's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, has raised an undisclosed sum of money from notable investors to further expand into Latin America. The investment was led by Ripple with participation from Coinbase and Jump Capital. Existing investors, Digital Currency Group and Panera Capital also participated in the round, according to an announcement on Monday. So Bitso, uh, which has been operating in Mexico since 2014 and claiming to serve over 750,000 users in the country, now wants to expand into Argentina and Brazil, among other Latin American nations. And guys, this is great for Ripple because they are a Ripple liquidity provider and so if uh, Bitso can get into these other South American countries, it'd be great for Ripple opening up new corridors, opening up new opportunity. Of course, this is why Ripple has their money in the game. 
to help Bitso expand and to help the XRP ecosystem. So it says down here, the region is uh, ready for disruption and we want to be the ones to do so by radically advancing financial inclusion for everyone. Uh, this from Daniel Vogel, co-founder and CEO of Bitso. Indeed, 70% of Latin America's population don't have a bank account, as uh, the block reported in July. Moreover, several countries in the region have been experiencing macroeconomic challenges of their own. Uh, so, you know, it could indeed help a lot of, uh, you know, there, there are other issues in Latin America. You know, we've talked about Venezuela before. Uh, on this channel and the uh, ever inflating Venezuelan Bolivar. Uh, so there are issues there. Could cryptocurrency liquidity in Latin America bring change? I think so. We believe that regulatory compliant fiat to crypto gateways around the world are an essential element to digital assets becoming a new global money transfer rail, said Peter Johnson, principal at Jump Capital, uh, on participating in Bitso's investment round. So, you know, everybody's got their own reasons why they want to uh, be part of this Bitso expansion. And I think it's okay, essentially, you know, making those rails available, expanding cryptocurrency into regions where, uh, you know, it may not otherwise see the light of day. This is all good for the ecosystem. Uh, so then I saw this XRPL Labs ledger exposed reveals XRP accumulation trend is on the rise. Uh, and I know somebody reported on this yesterday, but essentially, guys, to be part of the 1%, you now need to hodl more XRP. And you might think to yourself, oh, well, that's not good. You know, it's it's increasing. So now I'm not part of the 1% now. How do I catch up? But really, guys, that's a false economy. I don't want you guys to think that way. Hold as much XRP as you can afford. What you should be paying attention to is the fact that if that number is increasing, that's good for you and I because that means that more people are holding more quantities of XRP if that threshold is rising. Therefore, the perception of XRP and the value of XRP is uh, going up in people's minds and that's what's important. Okay, even if on paper it's only trading at, uh, what is it, at 29.1, right? Is that what I said earlier today? 29.1 XRP USD. Let's check it out on the chart here. Uh, yeah, okay, so now it's trading at 29.2. Okay, wow, we're seeing uh, this hourly volume bar go up. Uh, you know, so even if it's trading at 29 cents or so, the perception is what matters, and that is going up. Now, we can see ledger.exposed. For those of you guys who don't know this, this is a really handy website. Uh, it, it gives you a bunch of stats. You know, XRP wallets holding uh, what percentage of XRP and how many there are. You can go by number of accounts, by percentage of accounts. Uh, there's a lot of great information on this site. But guys, I'm going to let you in on a little something. The number hasn't necessarily steadily gone up over time. Uh, this is a snapshot back from uh, just a couple of months ago, just from uh, June 2019. And uh, yes, as you can see, the number was lower here, 67,781. And by August... It was also 67,762. Uh, but if we go back here, and this is another snapshot here, from August 2018, the number was actually higher at 74,500, give or take. And then uh, over here, I believe this is a November number, uh, 74,548. Or is this the range from August to November? Uh, I'm not sure. Nevertheless, the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, a year ago, it was higher. It was over 70,000. And now it's uh, it's hit that 70,000 mark, guys. This is from today. 1%. 70,000 XRP will bring you into the 1%. Okay, and this is trend. Okay, this is the trend from uh, July 23rd at 66.8 to October 7th at 69.9. Today it's at 70,000 and one XRP will bring you to the 1%. And the point is the higher this number goes, the more valuable XRP is in the mind of hodlers. And that's a good thing. We want people's perception of XRP to be valuable because this is what's going to create a healthy, robust ecosystem and where we will see the price of XRP rise. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, then I saw this here from uh, at Swedish underscore gold on Twitter, Andreas H. Thank you so much, Andreas, for sending me this. Nordic banks agree funding for the P27 cross-border payments platform. And so he links this article here. Essentially, Danske Bank, Handelsbanken, Nordia, OP Financial Group, SEB, and Swede Bank have signed a shareholder's agreement agreed to a business plan and made a financial commitment that will cover all costs up until the company is financially sustainable. The ambition is to launch the payments platform in 2021, so a couple of years away now. So I jumped right in here. I forgot this, this little paragraph up here. Six Nordic banks have agreed to fund the development of a cross-border real-time payments platform 
as part of the P27 collective. So the initial goal is to enable real-time batch, domestic and cross-border payments to be carried out quickly at a low cost between people and businesses within the countries of Denmark, Finland, and Sweden. Cross-border payments to be carried out quickly and at a low cost. Sound familiar, anyone? So the CEO of the Nordics payment platform says P27 will become the world's first integrated domestic and cross-border real-time payments platform. The Nordic bank sector already has a leading position in Europe, and P27 will help further expand and consolidate this position. Today's decision from all of our owners demonstrates their commitment, belief, and support. And so get this, guys. In June 2019, an agreement was signed with MasterCard to operate the payments platform. The next step for P27 is to obtain the necessary clearing license and merger filing approvals as well as continuing to develop the clearing platform together with MasterCard. So guys, MasterCard is running this thing. And what do we know about MasterCard with regards to cross-border real-time payments? Ah, uh, how about this from back a few months ago now, long-standing Ripple Partner R3 teams up with MasterCard to introduce blockchain international payment solution. So guys, could they be using XRP to settle in 2021? I believe they will be. I mean, just let's look at the facts. It's a cross-border real-time payments platform, and those payments will be carried out quickly and at a low cost. They're not spelling it out directly in this article here, uh, and, but they are saying MasterCard is to run this thing, and MasterCard is linked to R3 now, as we know. R3 quarter settler using XRP to settle, so I feel as though this is what it's going to be when all the details shake out in 2021. And finally, guys, I did see this on Twitter from Mr. B XRP. So at XRP Mr. on Twitter, last year XRP went from 26 to 56 cents in the two-week run-up to swell. What will this year bring? And Mr. B XRP, I do believe that it actually went to 76 cents. Not to detract from this lovely tweet, but I think it actually went higher. Let's just go back here uh, just to see, but I believe I'm right. Let's just go back here. So Swell was around. So this is the run-up to Swell here in September 2018. Trading on September 17th, 2018, XRP was at 26.9. Uh, and then this high here over just four days, guys, XRP went up to 76.4 approximately. So approximately 300% in four days. It is very possible, guys, and right now we're trading at about the same place, but the difference in 2019 is that there is more interest in XRP and more news has come out that could propel XRP speculation before this year's swell to new heights. It's all supply and demand. We'll see how high XRP gets. Anyways, guys, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.